Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we're going to take an in-depth review look at the Books Leaf 2, the updated 7-inch e-ink reader from Books. Before we start, full disclosure, this review unit has been sent to me as a review unit loan by Books, for which I am very grateful. But the way that works is I get it for a certain period of time, a couple of weeks usually, then I do the review and send off the unit to the next reviewer in line. So that way I get to get the unit for a review and impartial and independent uh, look at the device and present the information to you. So no sponsored content or anything like that. And as usual, Books has no say and no control over what I determine and how I present information here because that impartiality and objectivity is the biggest priority I have for my deep guide. And how is that actually possible to do? Well, through your support by liking, subscribing, uh, dinging for notifications, interacting with the videos, commenting and all of these things help the channel actually remain visible and gain traction with the new viewers. And if you're interested in actually helping the My Deep Guide uh, independency even further, then I invite you to go to mydeepguide.com shop and check out the My Daily Organizer, which is a hyperlinked PDF file that covers all your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, weekly, daily, diary needs on eNote devices and something that a lot of users actually find quite helpful. So maybe it's something that might suit your needs as well. And now onwards with the Leaf 2. And here is the Books Leaf 2, the latest uh, e-reader only. So not a nose-taking device uh, from Books. And it's a completely redesigned and a different approach than what the Leaf 1 was. First of all, you have the black edition, which is the one that I'm going to be reviewing here. And there's a white edition that for all intents and purposes is the same. Uh, it just has an indented screen and is of a white color and is a little bit lighter. Leaf 2 is a 7-inch HD e-ink Carta screen. That's the uh, Carta 1200 screen that's there. Resolution is 1680 by 1264, which means, of course, 300 ppi and capacitive touch only, so no note-taking capabilities here. It's equipped with a quad-core CPU, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, which is expandable because the Leaf 2 has the micro SD slot and it has the standard connectivity, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, has a dual front light, uh, independently controllable, supports a multitude of formats, uh, document formats, image formats, audio formats, and third-party apps. You can sideload them as APKs, or you can uh, register and enable the Google Play Store and then simply install them that way. As far as the interactivity and hardware buttons go, it has a power button, it has page turn buttons, it has a USB-C port that supports an OTG and can be used as an audio jack. Uh, it has a micro SD, as I already mentioned, and it also has a built-in speaker, one, not dual, and a built-in microphone. One of the big things that I think is a really nice addition is that it finally has a G sensor for auto rotation, which is excellent, uh, along with the buttons, I think are, they're also excellent. It has a healthy battery with 2000 milliamps, six millimeters thin, and you have 150 56 by 137 millimeters are the body dimensions. And as mentioned, you have the black version at 185 grams and the white version at 170 grams. One thing that it doesn't have, and I think that a dedicated e-reader should have, is uh, some kind of waterproof certification. And this one isn't any of it. It's not waterproof, It's you cannot submerge it, and it's not splash proof. So even if you do get a splash, do wipe it off quickly. I think that is an omission for a device like that because its major competitors, the Kindle Paperwhite and let's say Kobo Libra 2, they're both of course waterproof and not only waterproof but submersible as well. So that is a big advantage of the competitors. As far as the design goes, I think that it looks wonderful. I really, really love the look of it. Yeah, it's all smudged up, but uh, so you can actually see that yes, you will get some smudginess, but you can take a cloth and then you can wipe it off and then it's going to be fine. So, but I want to show you exactly how the device is when you actually use it after a little while. And pretty much 
all of the negatives that I've had with the Leaf 1 were eliminated or are eliminated with the Leaf 2 design. Gone is the ridiculous, remarkable to rip off design and now we have this kind of a design. Gone are the sharp edges and things like that. It's no longer thick, it's much thinner. So basically everything that was not that good with Leaf 1 has been, you know, kind of canned and they've taken a new approach and I really, really do like how this one looks like. Because it doesn't have a Wacom layer on top, it's a tiny bit brighter than a note-taking capable device and the sharpness and image clarity is also a tiny bit better. I will do a comparison of the same document and the same pages on both the Libra 2 and the Paper White later in this video so that you can actually compare that and we'll compare the front lights as well. The power button is on top with the LED indication, nothing on one of the sides and on the other side you have the USB-C, one of these is a microphone, one of these is a speaker, but they are masquerading both as speakers, which is kind of weird. And you have the micro as the slot here. And conveniently, you can see the buttons here for next and previous. The buttons are very nice and they feel good. And somebody said like they're clicky and I, you have to press it in a very specific way there one is kind of clicky the other one is not clicky at all so yeah that's pretty much it it depends really what you want but i think that they are very very good some people might mind the fact that there is no gap between them so that you might accidentally press okay indy you'll go out just a second and that's something to definitely be aware of the ergonomics are very nice for me at least of course you can't ever get a design that's gonna you know please everyone so that's virtually impossible but for my sensibilities, uh, this really works. I think it's extremely comfortable with the rounded edges and the thinness and the weight. It's just balanced, right? And it works really well. Now, um, one of the commenters kind of mentioned that, hey, they really don't like it at all because of the buttons and the ergonomy of things. Well, yeah, okay, that's totally fine. So that's something to kind of keep in mind that they're maybe too close together and that there's no split between them. The split, I agree. I completely agree. The split would be a good thing because they are now uh, like this but I, I really don't see it as a big issue but the thickness the weight the rounded corners it's just really accessible and really really nice the footprint I also do like it I think that it's really really small this is the other seven inch uh, uh, reader and you can see that the footprint is actually significantly smaller than the Libra 2, for example. And as far as thickness goes, there is absolutely no competition. I mean, there's a huge difference. Even on the thinner side of the Libra, the Leaf 2 is a lot thinner. Now, if we bring the Paper White, which is not a true seven inch, but it's 6.8, so as close as, and you can again see that the footprint is different. So uh, Leaf 2 is a little bit wider by that extension of the buttons, but the candle is significantly longer, so much so that I can't fit it in the frame without zooming out. That's all it needed. So yeah, that's the footprint comparison. And again, if you want to compare the thicknesses, yeah, there is really no comparison because despite the rounded edge, it gives a nice kind of illusion. Leaf 2 is considerably thinner than the Paper White, and this is the 2021 version. So yeah, basically out of these competitors, this is the smallest 7-inch e-reader that I've had the opportunity to kind of review and use in any way that I've come across. Thinnest, smallest footprint, and I really, really do like it. Leaf 2 comes equipped with the Android 11, and basically it has all of the stuff that you would normally kind of expect from um, Android 11, with one exception, the Google Play Store is not enabled by default, but you can simply go into apps, settings, then app management, and you go through the enable Google Play and the GSF ID procedure to enable it. And once you do, you will have your Google Play Store normally enabled and available for you to use and install apps from 
directly. One interesting fact about the Leaf 2 as well is that because it's an Android 11 environment, you can do screen recording and screenshots as well, which is quite a nice thing to do. It also has like uh, any other books device, it has multiple refresh modes from uh, normal, speed, A2 and X mode. Normal and speed are for reading. And for me, the speed one is like the best compromise, though you will have a bit more ghosting. Uh, so if you prefer like the cleanest type of experience and you really don't care about the performance of page flipping, which is normal for an e-reader, that's basically what you're going for, then switch to normal and you won't have the ghosting issues pretty much at all. Furthermore, it's actually possible to set up uh, individual apps or the settings overall here. After how many operations will you do a full screen refresh? which is also a good thing. Sp faster mode, if we are in A2 mode on the Google Play Store, you can see that it's a lot faster, but of course, faster you get, more ghosting you will have. And basically you can go to X mode as well, but that is like a severe degradation of uh, quality. So that's not something that I would recommend. And I don't really see many situations where X mode is usable. So. At a pinch, you could um, observe or consume interactive content on the Leaf 2 by using the A2 mode. But my recommendation is to keep it on the uh, normal refresh mode to enjoy the best quality of the device. I'm not going to go into the full on tutorial of the library and how the books library works. Um, just a couple of things you can have between uh, you can choose between the library mode. I think they're calling it scan mode and directory mode in scan mode. Basically, you can have your own bookshelves and you can organize your content into bookshelves, which doesn't correspond to your uh, devices folders, right? So it's not your storage folders, it's actual bookshelves, which is kind of interesting because you can dump load all of the content that you want in one folder and then organize it as bookshelves. Or what I do prefer personally is the directory mode because I personally organize my files as uh, in, in folders and then you can synchronize that. One other benefit, again, because of an Android is that you can use external synchronization and cloud services. So for example, I'm using AutoSync that synchronizes with my Google Drive and then I just synchronize and get my library automatically. You can also choose to use uh, Books Drop or Drop Books, Push Books, uh, Books Native App on uh, Android or iOS and direct connection. So you can directly connect the USB to the device. Um, there's so many different options that you can actually choose to how to get the content onto the device that, uh, well, it's an Android device. So you can get it directly from Google Drive, from Dropbox, from wherever you want. And also you can back things up directly onto those services. And it's a very, very nice thing to see. And of course, far more powerful than what the competition offers. Another big plus of the Leaf 2 is its native reader, which is the Neo Reader app. And I absolutely love that app for its multitude of options and uh, so many formatting abilities and everything that you can do, like reflowing PDFs, formatting them in different ways. And you have also the very, very powerful navigation minus the split screen. So because it's a smaller format, there's no split screen functionality on the device or in the Neo reader, but you do still get the comic mode, article mode, reflowing, custom mode, and all of these things, which are really, really powerful. And you can also customize the reader settings so that you can, for example, you go to settings and then in global settings, you can choose what you want to show. So for example, you can enable or disa disable the reading status bar and you can show progress in percentage, chapter name and page number, battery percentage, and things like that. You can perform additional optimization optimizations and settings. How do you want your PDFs to be opened and displayed by default, export settings and variety of different options. Another thing that's really good is the image control because you have individual con control of emboldening, sharpening images, uh, controlling watermark bleaching and dark color enhancements. And incidentally, this is also in the contrast is where you have the option to turn the dithering on or off. So if it's off, this is how an image looks by default fault without dithering. 
but if you turn it on, you will see that the image quality and everything becomes really, really nice. Here's one example where the formatting and the auto rotation really come into play. So for example, uh, this uh, page and text is way too small for something like this, but then I can simply switch it into this mode. And now each of the presses will scroll down the page until it reaches the end. Then it will go to the next page, next page and go this way. So even though it is a seven inch display, which is realistically small for certain types of PDFs, that's really not a problem because of the powerful formatting capabilities of the Neo Reader. And also because the device has an auto rotation. The image quality, as I said, is really crisp. So this is super tiny text here. Um, but because of the 300 PPI and because the image quality or the screen quality is the way it is, everything is crisp and smooth and sharp and the contrast is really, really good. And also if the default settings don't suit you, you can go to contrast and further adjust the image. Uh, to your liking. EPUB display is really wonderful. You can use the page up and page down buttons to actually flip around and you can actually tap or swipe or do anything that you really want. One of the things that's important to kind of keep in mind is how to control the ghosting. So you can actually, if you swipe up and try to get to the e-ink center while in the reader, that's a new thing that they've added, which I think is completely cumbersome. But now you have to go to settings and then refresh, and then you can choose which settings you want. And here you also have Regal, which is something that a lot of uh, uh, readers actually prefer. And this basically resembles the quality, the sharpness and the crispness of um, uh, a Kindle, for example, a traditional kind of Kindle. So you do have like a huge amount of options here to choose from. And uh, yeah, this is, for example, Moby Dick and uh, auto rotation for an EPUB works just fine. You can use it like this. You can use it like that, which is kind of strange if you would do it. But why would you use then buttons? You, you can just simply tap here and don't have any problems. So whether you're a lefty or or uh, righty, it doesn't matter. The auto rotation does the job. Um, let's see if the buttons flip. So this is previous, this is next. Okay, so let's see, we're at page 10 now. And if I flip around, I would expect the same thing. So this should be previous and this is next. So the functionality of the buttons actually flips with the orientation, which is a very nice thing to see. That's something that's a small detail, but it's an important detail that um, means that somebody was actually thinking about these things. As far as formatting capabilities for the EPUBs go and the performance, it's actually really good. Um, this is a longer um, documents so you can easily change the formatting the way you want you can embolden the text if you wanted to you can uh, choose text enhancement yeah it just makes it a little bit crisper uh, you can choose different fonts and there's lots of different fonts that you can choose from in the system you have so in the system you have a bunch of fonts to actually choose from which is a nice thing to see then you have additional options for encoding and yeah traditional normal stuff that you would see on an EPUB. Uh, additionally, you have the spacing controls and it's really, really detailed and good. I love that you have paragraph spacing, line spacing, top, bottom, left, right, margin, word spacing, like really, really detailed ways to format uh, your document to exactly your liking. And that's something that's pretty, pretty cool to see. So the performance I think is excellent. It doesn't matter what type of settings you actually use. This is Regal but let's go back to, let's say, normal. There's no problems with ghosting that I can see from a normal reading point. You do see maybe some, but if you don't like that, you can actually set it up that it does a full page refresh on each page turn or anything like that. So there's a lot of flexibility that you can use to make Leaf to behave exactly the way you want it to. And another benefit of it being an Android 11 and having a Google Play Store is that you can not only transfer everything the way that I showed you, which is really flexible, but you can also install Kindle, you can install Kobo, you can install uh, yeah, Audible if you want and transfer your libraries and use them on a single device, all centralized here.
pretty cool. Better life on Leaf 2. There's something going on with the current uh, uh, version of the hardware that they're using, both on the Tab Ultra and on the Leaf, because it's way less than what I would expect it to be and what I got from other devices. So, for example, this one on the, with the front light set at 50%, and then I set the reader to do auto flip pages every 20 seconds. And then I let it do that for three hours and then I check the, the value, right? So at uh, with the front light at 50% and Wi-Fi turned on, Leaf 2 was spending 3.67% per hour, which is around 27 hours per charge of reading time, which is not bad at all, but I was expecting a little bit more. Uh, what's especially confusing is the second and the third result. And remember, it's the same test and it's going over three hours. And I repeated it actually over six hours as well on uh, Frontlight 25 and got the exact same result. So it's not the duration. And with the Frontlight at 25%, so quarter, less than 50, consumption was more. It was consuming 4% of battery, which averages at around 25%. And most confusing of all is that when it was with the front lights turned off, the consumption was exactly the same, 4% per hour or 25 hours per charge estimate. That doesn't track and the, the, the standby is excellent and I don't see it draining battery like when I'm using it normally, but in that auto page flip mode, it does. So I don't really know exactly what's going on, but this smells like a software issue to me that has something to do with the, that we can actually see on Tab Ultra and on this one as well. Gotta let Indy out. I would expect a much better reasoning result from a setup like this. And this wouldn't be the first time that we would see like a software uh, fix to actually kind of do this, but it looks like that the battery life is being siphoned somewhere. And the biggest indication for me is this inconsistency and basically that the front light doesn't even matter. Uh, you can have it on or off or at 50%, it's still gonna spend the same amount, roughly the same amount of energy. And that's more often than not a strong, very, very strong indication that there is some software issue that's not being optimized. So hopefully that's gonna be the case. But as it is right now, those are the results that I get after repeated tests and with the latest update. Then again, it got a new update right now, like as I was filming. So I didn't do it with that test. Maybe that fixes it or not, but that's the result as I have it uh, right now. All right, so here we have a comparison of the same exact document on same uh, under same lighting conditions. All three devices have the front light set to 50%, even though they're really bright conditions, but I wanted to make sure that everything is exactly the same and using the exact same documents. Um, Leaf 2 is using the on and it's using the normal refresh mode and there are no refresh modes to choose from on these two. So let's first try and uh, flip the pages on all of them at the same time. So let's do this. <laughs> okay, I, I am obviously touching this way, but it looks like that it's one, two, three. It looks like Kindle is the fastest, then Leaf 2. Well, they were very close, but Kobo is definitely trailing behind. These two are very, very close to each other, but I think Kindle is just a little bit faster. Now, as far as the image quality and clarity goes, I think that you can, uh, I'm gonna do this so that we can have a direct comparison of all three devices. So you can see here, uh, Kindle, Leaf, Kobo, and then you can actually try and see the difference in super tiny text. How does it look like on a different device? Now, to my eyes, I think that the uh, Leaf 2 and the uh, Kindle have a very, very similar type of uh, quality, almost identical. And Kobo Libra actually trails a little bit behind because it's a little bit fuzzier and a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit less contrasty. So that's the, the impression that I have. So let's now flip pages. Yeah, definitely Libra is the slowest one. Let's see if it uh, 
uh, let's go like this. So let's see if flipping the pages with the buttons will do something different. No, it's still kind of slower. All right. So that's kind of the performance. Now let's check out the image quality and clarity on images. As I said, dithering is on on the leaf too. And uh, as you can see, I think that uh, you can clearly see the dithering on the uh, Libra 2. The Kindle to my eye looks way too dark. The sharpness is good, but it's way too dark. And there is definitely some dithering going on here. And quite honestly, out of these three, I think that the Leaf 2 uh, looks really, really the most balanced and the most beautiful one. Let's check out some more. Yep, some more dithering, more dithering. And this one is there. Not to say that the Kindle uh, doesn't look good. Of course it looks good, but it's just to my preference at least. This one's a little bit more yellowy. This one's a little bit more white. And this one's a little bit more bluish kinda. Um, so that's at least how it looks like in the real world. I don't know how much the camera will be able to pick these things up. But as far as the image quality goes, here is your direct comparison. And then you can be the judge of uh, what works best for you and what you think is the best choice for your needs. And now I am using the same exact book on the same account. I don't know if it's going to get a conflict or not, but uh, Kobo app, Android app on the Leaf 2 and of course Kobo native Kobo. And right off the bat, you can see that the formatting is different, but let's try and kind of match that a little bit. So it looks a bit more closer. Okay. That's too small. Let's find something that looks quite good, something that I would read. And this is also a bit too small. So let's just try and get it uh, a bit bigger. Okay, the performance is relatively slower. Yeah, I think that the performance is definitely on the slower side of things when reformatting in the Kobo app. Let's see, let's increase the font size here. Yeah, it's a bit slower, definitely on the app itself and on the leaf too. That's the bottom line. So that's uh, how that looks like. Let's see page flipping. And here we have a different story altogether. So we have much faster page flipping on the uh, Kobo. And you can see that the um, refreshing is done completely differently. You can see that it waits until everything's done and basically as if it refreshes everything in one go while you have a little bit of redrawing here. Now I have to check which screen mode we're in. We're in normal. Let's see if Regal changes things on Leaf. Mm, no, it's actually quite and you have this whoosh kind of thing. Very, very slow refresh. Speed mode, I'm pretty sure it's going to be faster, but that usually leaves a bit more ghosting. Actually, no. So the speed mode is the one still a bit slower than the native Kobo app for page flipping in the same book. But I don't know if no, that's it. So yeah, the speed mode, I think, is the closest one that performs to the native Kobo app. And here we have the same book with the Paperwhite and the Kindle app on the Leaf 2. Um, currently, it's the normal refresh mode on Leaf 2. And let's see. Yeah, it's not that good at all because you have that kind of smudginess so much faster and responsive on the Kindle itself. Now let's see if we can improve things by going to by going Regal or Speed. Um, no, Regal is yes, it's cleaner and things, but uh, definitely not the performance we're looking for. And Speed. Uh, that's the problem with the Kindle app and they're doing it intentionally. So there's no way that you're going to get the performance of a Kindle on a non Kindle device so in the Kindle app with an e-ink, you will always have these kinds of things. And this is which with page turn animations off. So maybe, maybe there is a setting somewhere to actually make this not do the whole page turn in the Kindle app, but I am not sure where that might be. So it's not going to do it every single time, but it's definitely annoying. And overall the reading uh, aspect of it, 
Uh, as far as Kindle books go, Kindle app versus the Kindle dedicated device, Kindle will always win. However, a normal EPUB or a normal PDF on the leaf would actually be pretty much on par with the Kindle as we've seen from the previous comparison. So that's where the things stand. All right, so here we have Kindle, uh, Paperwhite 2021, Leaf 2, and Kobo Libra 2. So all of these now have a light set up at full intensity at 50% uh, warmth, uh, because this one, this one works that way because you have uh, both warm and cold light. So in effectively, both are at the uh, maximum, so that makes it uh, an equivalent of these. And this is basically what the uniformity and intensity looks like, and far bigger range in the intensity of the Leaf 2 than the other two. As far as uniformity goes, uh, they're really kind of uh, similar, but I'm gonna lower the Leaf 2 until it's somewhere... Oh, this is unlinked. Let's link them. I'm gonna lower the intensity on Leaf 2 until it's somewhere similar a little bit less there we go maybe one up something like this and it's a bit more similar so definitely more kind of brighter and less yellowish when everything is centered as far as the front light goes now let's uh, put the front light intensity down to 50 ish percent and see how that looks like. And this is at 50% in fairly dark conditions. And you can see that actually the calibration of the intensity is like all over the place. And now these two are brighter than this one. So it just says that Leaf 2 has a much wider range. So bigger maximums and lower minimums, which is actually something that I do like because you can uh, fine tune it more, more better than uh, these two. And you have a little bit more control because it has 36 levels this one has 24 levels of intensity and this one i'm not really sure i haven't really counted so i don't know now as far as the uh, color itself goes this is how the cold light looks like on maximum on all of these three devices pretty good i i do prefer the quality and the i don't know something about the front light on the kobo it's actually quite nice this one's i don't know feels a bit more Digital. It's a weird thing to kind of say, I know, but that's just what I'm kind of feeling uh, about it. That's the first uh, 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 thought that comes to mind. So now let's flip them to warm and see how that looks like. And there we go. So you have actually more hue, definitely more hue on both the Kobo and the uh, Paperwhite paper white and the front light is a little bit more washed out and you can see definitely a little bit of inconsistency here and there that's going to be accentuated on the camera which is actually a good thing but just keep in mind it's not that intensive the inconsistencies are not that intensive in reality but definitely that's the biggest difference the uniformity of front light on uh, the kindle and the kobo is definitely better than on the leaf 2 so it trails behind but not by a lot so i do prefer the intensity flexibility settings but the overall quality is a little bit lower than either of the two all right so it's the conclusion time for the leaf Two. And as usual, let's start with the cons. Well, the first con for me uh, at the current time, I have to mention it, is the battery life because I simply think that it should be able to do better. But as I already explained, I think that that's a software issue and hopefully that's something that will be resolved sooner rather than later. The uh, buttons themselves, I don't mind the buttons at all, but I do think that there could have been a gap in between them. I don't like the cover. I don't like the cover so much that I was seriously entertaining the thought that I don't want to even cover it. I don't want to cover the cover at all and just flat out tell you don't even bother looking at it. But here it is. You'll, you'll see some footage of the cover now, but I, there's, there's nothing I like about this cover, absolutely nothing about it. So you're better off, you know, putting it in a sock or something or whatever. But I, I really, really don't like that cover at all. 
it's not water resistant. That's a problem. And finally, the price at 199 US dollars is definitely the most expensive of the, um, yeah, the, the ones at least that I've shown here because Kobo Libra 2 is at $180, so $20 less than the Leaf 2. And the Prepore White regularly is around $140 if you don't catch some crazy deal, which is $60 less than the Leaf 2. Now, it's also worth mentioning that both uh, Libra 2 and the uh, Paper White, they're waterproof and they actually can work underwater, while that's not the case with the Leaf 2. Then on the other hand, Leaf 2 is a full-on Android 11 system with Google Play and uh, you can have Kobo, you can have Kindle on it, you can have a bunch of other applications or whatever reader you want and plus it has a Neo reader on it. So you do have that side of things that's really, really positive. But I still think that price needs to be placed in a con because it's $200 for a seven inch reader. It is the most expensive one. So it's something to definitely keep in mind. Another con of the Leaf 2 is that overall, even though it's a quad core CPU and it has two gigabytes of RAM and stuff like that, this one actually does feel a bit sluggish. It takes a long time to start up Kindle, takes a long time to start up these things and it just feels a little bit slower. And another con is basically these side buttons are great for native environment, but inexplicably um, there's no way to make them work as page flipping buttons in uh, Kindle app or the Kobo app. So basically when you're in those apps, these buttons actually do nothing. Now onto the pros. Um, the first one is the design and the build quality. I absolutely love the design of the Leaf 2. I think that they've done a marvelous job at improving the Leaf as a seven inch uh, e-reader. And I really love the build quality and how it feels in the hand, how thin it is, and all of these things. It just feels like a really, really good device without that cover, just with the device alone, it feels really, really good. The addition of buttons, it's a huge, huge plus. The versatility of the system, the ability to install any app and use Kindle, Kobo, Audible, or whatever you may want that you can actually use centralized on one device. As you know, I absolutely love the Neo Reader as a reader platform and having that integrated here by, you know, by default is a huge plus for the leaf to image quality is excellent as you've seen for me it's actually the best out of these three because when i was comparing all of these things it's one thing you can always make letters pop when it's a device as good as this one but when we're talking about uh, uh, setting it up correctly and using the correct refresh uh, mode so that you don't have the ghosting thing and all of that kind of stuff and you turn on dithering and everything then you really get the image quality that just pops even more than on the paper white and that's a tall order but the leaf definitely manages that and as far as i'm concerned for an e-reader the image quality clarity contrast that's the most important thing uh personally for me and leaf 2 definitely has the best one out of the paper white and the libra 2 competitors on the market. It's very, very light. I think it's something like 170, 180 grams or something like that. But combination of the format thinness and the weight, it's super portable and really, really nice to actually have. And the overall form factor, while I'm talking about that, is excellent because it's the smallest footprint of any of the uh, these competitors that I've been talking about. So it's definitely smaller and thinner than the Libra 2. And it is shorter and thinner than the paper white. So as far as portability goes, it's uh, really, really good and super easy to use. However, it is not as portable as a six inch reader, which is just normal <laughs> because it's physically smaller. So yes, that's something that you definitely have to keep in mind. Yes, the, that if you're going from a six inch reader to a seven inch reader, that it's going to be larger. So the summary is, is this the best e-reader on the market? It's darn good. 
So let's just you know, make it really plain. It's a really, really, really good e-reader. Is it perfect? Nope. It has all the things that we've talked about. So there are some issues for sure. Uh, none of them are deal breakers as far as I'm concerned. And I think that it comes down to personal preference. If you don't want to spend uh, 200 bucks on an e-reader, but you would still like to get close to that seven inch real estate, then the paper white, especially if you catch like a good deal and you get it like at 120 or 110 bucks, then a paper white is definitely a better value, especially if you're just on the Kindle or primarily on in the Kindle ecosystem, um, then that one actually makes more sense. Uh, when I'm talking about between the Libra 2 and this one, we're talking about like 20 bucks difference and that's a bit more of a trickier situation because this has better image quality than the Libra 2 but the Libra 2 has waterproof resistance and better front light but it's a lot bulkier and maybe better battery life so it really is like a mm -hmm -hmm seesaw kind of thing. Will you regret buying this? Uh, only if you use the cover <laughs> then yes you will regret the cover but I don't think that that's fair to characterize the device just because the cover is terrible. I mean, throw that cover away and focus on the device and you might be able to enjoy it a, a whole lot more than... Uh, so yeah, just disregard that cover. It's, it's a complete mess. But as a device itself, is it worth 200 bucks? Only if you want to use it as a centralized e-reader that's going to encompass all of your EPUBs, PDFs, Kindle, and a Kobo library, and you want to have all of that in one place, or if you're interested in um, digesting a lot of technical documents, PDF documents, and everything because of that landscape format and easy navigation, things like that, this is an incredibly powerful reader and versatile reader. So for those things, it makes a heck of a lot of sense, and it is worth the price tag. Um, if you just want this to replace your Kindle and you're, all you're ever going to do is read Kindle on this one, then it doesn't make sense because Kindle Android app doesn't work as good on any Android um, as the native Kindle device will do. So it really depends what you want. But as far as a universal, all-encompassing e-reader device on the market, this is a really, really good device. I just wish that it was water resistant. Oh, and a much better cover, of course. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> well, I like it a lot. I really do, but I still love my fateful poke too. Like, I I'm, I'm like, I'm turning into these like old geezer kind of a guy, which is like, eh, yeah, things were better in my day, but I s just love poke to so much and it has pretty much all the capabilities of this one and yeah it's a little bit thicker but the because it's a six inch device it's a much smaller footprint and i don't really miss the buttons i don't see a reason personally for me to exchange this for this so that's pretty much where i personally stand all right i hope you liked the video if you did please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide also let me down in the comments below what do you think of these things how did the comparison seem to you and what do you think which one of these three devices makes most sense for you and for what reason etc etc thank you so much for watching stay safe stay Stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.